Welcome to Tem Rinpoche Paranormal Zone. I am Lee Kim and I'm your host. Look at where I am. This is Bangkok, somewhere in Bangkok. It's a beautiful day. It's just before sunset. And I'm going to tell you a story. What you will see here is a lot of beautiful homes. But before these homes were built, it was an empty land. A lot of land, but owned by one family. Somewhere along the line, as time passed, two brothers owned two pieces of land that is basically the two houses here. Now, then the rest of it is still owned by um, the original family. Today, I'm going to tell you two stories. One story is over here by this tree, and another story is over there by this empty land that is now just filled with greens and plants and overgrown and it's really kind of creepy. I, I went to look at it and I'm going to show you later. Yeah, it's really kind of creepy so I kind of wanted to do my first location shooting in daylight. So what's going to happen is my friend Junai has been in Bangkok for a while and she has had some stories and experienced some sightings and within 20 seconds, what she saw wasn't there anymore. She also knows of a lady whom apparently has a very, very sad history and maybe even perhaps until now doesn't even know that she is dead. Interesting. Curious? Stay tuned. to my friend Junai. Junai, where are you? Okay, okay. Come. Come, come, come. So, tell me, you've been in Bangkok for how long now? I've been in Bangkok for just over two months already. Okay, and some interesting things have happened? Yes, you could say interesting, yes. Uh, uh, kind of, you know, my, my skin right now is kind of having the um, goosebumps effect. I mean, I'm not hairy, thank God, or else you'd be like, you could gel my hair, you know. So, um, tell me a little bit. Um, so, you came about two months ago, and then you were kind of preparing the house and stuff like that? Yes, and uh, while we were here, we heard some stories about a tree that was located on our neighbor's property. Right. Yes. What, was, what was the story you heard? The story that we heard was that there is an old lady spirit who actually lives in this tree and that she has actually been on this land that um, all the houses are located on and she has been here for a very long time already. Has anyone actually seen her? A few people who came with me have seen her or experienced sightings or got feelings that she's around but we've also been told that she's harmless and uh, that she's just very lonely and just curious to see what we're doing because when we first moved in we were making quite a lot of noise because of all the renovations. And I can imagine you said that she has probably uh, passed away many, many years ago, probably 10, 20 years ago. Yeah, so something like that. She's, been, um, she's passed away for quite a while now. And from the stories that we've heard, the feeling that most of us get is that the spirit doesn't really know that she's dead. So she kind of walks and talks and moves and behaves like she's still alive. So, um, a f your friend told you that the, the, the visualization or the visuals that he saw was basically like a middle-aged woman, lady? Yes, she's middle-aged and uh, quite, maybe, apparently quite stout or a bit plump. She has uh, dark hair that's about shoulder length and she is uh, sort of, yeah, she, she's just, she looks old and, and middle-aged. Yes. Right, yes. right. Okay, so um, apparently um, she is lonely and um, there's no one with her because sometimes some of these uh, sentient beings they are with family but she's apparently alone and I think when she was here um, it wasn't so developed and I think with the developments she has become perhaps disorientated and maybe even very curious so that's how you think that her curiosity made her kind of be felt when you guys were around Yes, uh, what we learned was that she has been here for a very, very long time, mm -hmm. possibly even before all the buildings were developed, mm -hmm. like you said. Mm -hmm. And because she's been here for so long, she sort of feels that this place is her home and it's her land. 
and she is the rightful owner of this place. Rightful doesn't mean that she would be, you know, fierce so she's and protecting not like it. Fierce and, and no. scary or wanting to chase people away. No. She's just she's just set in her ways basically. Right. So when things come about and there are big changes in the area, she gets curious and she wonders what's going on. So she comes out to have a look and investigate. So she's kinda caught in the past. Yes. And and with all this happening. She doesn't realize because she's kind of caught in the past, so she's extremely curious. And, and let me let me stress again: she's not harmful. She's not hurt anyone. Yes, that is exactly it. She's not harmful at all. Yeah. Mm. So what what has been happening? So you know, given the fact that you don't know so much about uh, the mysterious uh, um, uh, uh, spirit world, um, what have you? What have, what have, what practices have you done to kind of keep her happy or to make sure she um, her mind because even though they are spirits, they have a mind stream. So to, to keep her mind at peace. What we do every night is that we've been, we've been advised to um, give her food, give her drinks, show her compassion and kindness. Um, we were told that her favorite food is chocolate and biscuits and we should try and offer, give this to her as much as possible so that it makes her happy and it calms her mind so she's not so worried about what's going on around her. And the advice came from His Eminence Jem Tuku Rinpoche himself? Yes. The advice came from Rinpoche. Correct, correct. So, you know, you know how people are skeptical? They're like, correct or not? Are you sure or not? Your story come from where? So do you have any evidence that she's around? Well the some... chocolate thing. Oh yes. Uh, so we recently built a shelf um, mm. where we can make the um, give her the food more easily. And what happened was one day we were returning from um, outside and we walked past this shelf and the previous night I had seen someone give her food and it been about half a packet of Oreos and when we returned the bowl was on the floor placed very neatly on the floor all so the it wasn't like somebody came and just threw something no, around it's no not, it's not like the bowl fell over it was okay. set very nicely on the right. floor and all the Oreos were gone except for one and we had also given her that day a bar of chocolate mm. and Oh, sorry, the previous night we had given her a bar of chocolate and that day when we came back, half the bar had been eaten and had been eaten very neatly, not like an animal had come by and nibbled right, it. Right. So uh, we, we kind of thought maybe... So there is, there is physical evidence that consumption has taken place? Yes. yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, was it scary for you? Did you feel like, oh my God, it's true, she's really here? Or did you like feel good that she feels good? When we first moved in, because we didn't know that much about her, it was quite scary at first, knowing that there was a spirit in the tree next door. Right. But after, as Rinpoche spoke about her, and we realised that she was actually just very lonely and just set in her ways. When we saw that she had maybe come and eaten the food, we felt happy that you know she was enjoying it, or that she had some sort of happiness or something to have ple take pleasure from, you know, for mm -hmm. once. Mm -hmm. yes. So therefore, you can see that compassion does not just extend to those of us that we can see and we can touch. It also extends to those that we cannot see and cannot touch. Now that we've heard Jinai's story, I think it's time to have a look at the location, the actual place where Jinai makes offerings. Why don't you take me? Come along. Very, very neat. So these are offerings just made recently? Yes, we make these offerings every night. What Rinpoche has recommended to us is that if we don't have time or we're too busy, that we offer her at least a glass of warm water. Right. But on the days where we do have more time, then we'll offer her biscuits and chocolate, sometimes a combination of both. We will offer her warm milk and also incense and a candle. Right, so today we have a packet of uh, chocolate cake and also these are chocolate cookies, right, and her warm milk. And also, this is where you burn for her the candles and the, and the incense, I see. Lovely. Very nice. And not, you know what? I'm standing here right now and you would imagine with Jin Ai's story and, and having evidence that she is among us. I am not afraid. I, I don't have any, any fear feelings. Hmm. I wonder how that is. But the truth is, there is no fear when the motivation is kindness and compassion. It just overcomes all fear. Hi, Jinai and I are now sitting next to where we make offerings to her. It's not that we want to sit here, but I'm going to show you something. You remember Jinai says that she resides in a tree. Do you want to see that tree? It is a tree, right? Yes, yeah, it's a tree. And it's located on our neighbor's property, yeah. right next to the shelf where we make the offerings. 
So, um, is there, you know how, um, I was told that sometimes when you go to places like cemeteries, there is a scent. Does she have one? Yes, she has a scent oh. and we think that it's actually Jasmine. Um, a few weeks ago when there was a big group of us here, we were actually inside the house doing some work. And all of us were in the house, but suddenly there was this really, really strong smell of jasmine. And none of us... Creepily smell or like a... Mm. Kind of... Um, it was a nice smell, but it had a it was, creepy mix. Because, because it's too much? It, it was, was too much. Yeah. And we didn't know where it was coming from. Yeah. And no one had put on any sort of jasmine lotions yeah, or yeah, was burning yeah, jasmine yeah, incense. Yeah. And we were in the house with all the windows shut. So we ah. were wondering where the smell came from. Right, right. Yes. And then only after speaking to a few other people mm. who had felt her outside, mm. Mm. Um, outside the house mm. that we realised that whenever she's around, sometimes there is a strong smell of jasmine, so it could be her. But she has, um, despite that, despite smelling her presence, she's never done anything hostile, like knock over anything. She's always just been pleasantly coming, maybe like you said, curiosity, trying to see what you guys were doing. Yes, yeah. no, nothing violent or yeah. remotely violent even. Nothing that's been knocked over, no door slammed. She's not, she doesn't do that. Yeah. So the, the creepy creepy is you people la. Yeah, Your own vivid minds, imagination yeah. la. Ay, yo, yo. <laughs> okay, so are you ready to join me to have a look at the tree? Now, this is going to look really funny, but we're going to climb on these chairs. That's exactly why we're sitting here. So, ready? Yep. Let's go, let's have a look at the tree. Oh, that's, wow. that's the tree over there. And when we first moved to this house, yes. it used to have cloth, colourful cloth wrapped yes. all yes. around the base of the tree. And there were coconut offerings there, which was how we knew that there might be a spirit living in the tree. Mm, what, is the, uh, what is that practice about? Why, why the coloured cloth? Was it prayer, prayer cloth? or? Uh, it wasn't explained to us, but we think that it's an offering to the spirit that lives in the tree. Right, yes. right, okay. I'm standing near, I think, a very young jasmine tree. Hmm, there is a smell. Pleasant, but I can imagine if it's a lot of that, it could be creepy. Hmm, I am going to introduce you to a local, one who's Thai, and she's going to tell us a little bit about what the Thais believe in spirits. Hi, so um, tell me a little bit, of course, if you're comfortable um, speaking in Thai, um, I don't understand, but I can handle it. Okay, okay. Um, tell me, uh, what do the Thais believe in when it comes to spirits? Okay, I will, I will speak in Thai. Um, ๆแล้วคนไทยเชื่อว่าทุกๆที่ก็คือมีเจ้าที่เจ้าทางอยู่โดยเฉพาะต้นไม้. แล้วก็ต้นไม้ที่ใหญ่ที่มีอายุสูงแล้วเนี่ยส่วนใหญ่จะมีนางไม้สิงห์สถิตอยู่เพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยปกติเนี่ย